Hi, this is a video on how to use the update statement in SQL. Uh, if you're interested in running this code on your own uh, system, you can get the code. There's a card that should be popping up over here, and you can get the code from my blog. We're going to use the Northwind database on Microsoft SQL Server. If you're new to SQL, you might want to go review the select statement, in particular the WHERE clause. Everything you know about the WHERE clause is directly applicable in the update statement. And as a warning, if you haven't used insert, update, and delete, these are modifying commands. They modify the data in your database. And they were designed to be set at a time commands or capable of changing many records with one statement. In short, this is uh, very powerful but very dangerous. And you can do massive changes to your database with a single statement. Uh, enterprise level database is not going to say are you sure? It's not going to give you an undo button. So uh, just treat these with a lot of respect. Now the update statement changes the contents of existing rows. It changes records not tables and the record has to exist for you to change it. So we're going to use the orders table here and let's just take a look at what's there. Uh, this is existing. I think all of this comes with the Northwinds database. And we have an order with an order ID, etc. And just so I don't pollute my uh, sample data too much, I'm going to create a new record, do an insert into that table, and look at the result of the insert to see a record that I will end up playing with here. So I'm going to copy that order ID and then I will make sure that I'm doing my updates to this record. Notice that I left some nulls and I put minimal, minimal data in here so I can have uh, some uh, space to play around in. So here's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to update the orders table where the order ID is 11 99, 0, 99. That's the record that I just created. And the first thing I'm going to do is just change the order date to the current system time. So that's the get date function to get the current system time. I'll execute that. And notice that the message that I get back is just simple. Yeah, I did what you asked. I updated one record. And um, now I can check the record. So there it is. And there's the update to the record. It was null, and now it's March 21st, 2016, 1037, and 16 seconds, and 900 milliseconds. Now, I purposely used the primary key equal to some value uh, to limit the effect I could have on the table. So if I'm saying primary key equals to a value because the primary key is unique, at most I'm going to affect one record. So I'm going to do, again, that one record. But this time I'm going to set change two fields in that record. So I'm going to set the required date to a date. And then the ship name there is null to a new value. And notice the way I'm specifying this as a string literal. That's March 1st, 5 PM. And I can do the update. Again, one single record is updated. I can check the record. Make sure it goes in. So there is Bart, or April 1st, 5 p.m., and Douglas Klein. So now that you've seen a more full example, we can look at the general form of the update statement. Here, uh, update is the keyword, table name. Here I have a list of assignment statements. So in this example, I have two assignment statements. And notice that I have a comma separating those two assignment statements, and then a logical expression. And only records where this logical expression evaluates to true will be updated. A little bit more fully, I can do the update. And notice that each of these assignments, here's the field that's going to be changed. Here is an expression that gives the new value. And then each one of those is with a comma. And I can have uh, multiple set statements. So just to show you that we can use an expression for the new values, 
here is another example where I'm updating that uh, same record, but there's some changes. Here what I'm doing is I'm taking the freight, and the freight is currently zero, but I'm taking the old value of freight and adding 25 to it, and taking that new value and placing it into freight. So I'm expecting this to change to $25. I'm taking the current required date, which is March or April 1st, and I'm adding one week to it and placing it in there. Ship country, I'm just uh, concatenating three strings uh, to get three characters, and I should get a ship country of USA here. And then the other thing that I'm doing to show the logical expression here is that I'm not using the primary key, I'm using these first two columns. Now, I could have many records that have a customer ID of VINET and an employee ID of, Z of null. Um, so I'm just demonstrating that potentially I could change many records uh, by using some complex WHERE clause. So let me go ahead and run that. Again, one row affected, and let's check the results. So there's the required date changed to one week later, $25 for the freight, and the ship country is USA. So, um, you know, let's look at some counter examples of what happens um, when I violate the table constraints. Again, ch different from the select statement, when I'm doing insert, update, or delete, I'm actually changing data. So I need to make sure that the data, the new data, will not violate the table constraints. And just to look at the simplified um, definition of the table, notice that order ID is an identity field, which means it's created by the database. Notice that um, customer ID is character 5. Uh, it's allowable to be null, and I guess I didn't move this down here but uh, or show it, but both of these are foreign keys and have a foreign key constraint on them. So let's go through some examples of things that won't work. So let's say I tried to change the order ID to a certain value. Notice that I get this message, cannot update the identity column. So identity columns are not updatable. So it gives an error message, and another thing that it does is, uh, we're not seeing it here, but it says that zero records are affected. So let's try to now change the customer ID to Barney. That's six characters. It says that the data would be truncated, so again it throws an error. And let's try this with five characters now, so it's not too long. But notice now it says that, that would conflict with the foreign key constraint. So B-A-R-N-E is not a valid customer ID in the customer's table. So finally, um, let's try to update a record that is not there. So here's an order ID of 50,000, and I know that there are, there is no order with an order ID of 50,000. And when I execute that, uh, note that I don't get an error. All I get is a message saying zero rows were affected. So the database engine treats that as not an error and gives you an informational message. Now in your application that might be an error. However, you need to check that and uh, see if zero records affected is an error, but then you can treat it as such, but you need to check it. So in summary, uh, the update changes the contents of records that already exist. You should know the data types and the definition of the table and any foreign key constraints or identity settings or check constraints that might affect your update statement. Various things could block the update and treat these as your friends, uh, they're there, you uh, or your database administrator or designer has put them in there to keep the data clean. So you need to treat those as important and don't violate them. Well, sometimes your rows are not updated. So sometimes zero rows are updated and that's okay. 
but also sometimes millions of rows are updated. So just treat this statement with some respect and a little bit more thought. And uh, if you need to clean up your data, there's a delete statement. And uh, thanks for watching.